everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video um we have yet again another unboxing it's been quite a while since i've done one actually it's been a couple of months i think six seven or eight months something like that um now before i start i do want to apologize for my lack of um uploading um and uh, like i have been uploading but it's been like takeoffs and landings or whatever it hasn't really been anything like unboxings or model airport updates or something like that um so i am bringing you a um unboxing um there will be another unboxing the next unboxing will be um in about three to four months something like that because i am going to amsterdam so obviously if you're going to amsterdam you have to go to the aviation mega store so I will uh, g give a look and try and see if I can um, get a, a few models. Um, also, I am currently working on a, a new project, um, which is Bordeaux International Airport. Um, so I, I just need to stick the grass on and then I'm basically done. I'm ready for the first episode because, yeah, this time I'm going to try to do it in series. So like um episode one like the launch of the airport episode two like crisis has struck or whatever something like that um and i do also have another um project um of an airport based in um like ibiza and like the um iberian islands and everything um so yeah so i did want to apologize for that um but yeah but without further ado we're going to get straight into the unboxing and here is the box um, so, it's pretty big, um, it's not the actual box, I got, um, the models from Aviation Retail Direct, um, and, um, obviously the, they, um, give, when you buy it at the shop, they give, to, they give it to you, uh, in a plastic bag, and so to make it more realistic, I just put them in a box. Um, so yeah, so, um, without further ado, we're gonna get straight into it. So, um, so I'm really excited for these models, because they are... Um, they are really good, they're, I wouldn't say rare, but like, they're, they're models that I wanted to get for quite a while, um, and, um, and yes, yeah, so now, opening the box, as you can see, so for the first model that we have, we have the Norwegian uh, 737 Max 8 uh, by JC Wings. So I'm going to put it off to the side. Second model, we have the um, Aviation 400 uh, Air Canada Boeing 777-300ER. So obviously really excited for this one. And then last but not least, I'm not sure who made it, but I'm pretty sure it's Aviation 400 as well. But we have the ANA Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner in the um, R2-D2 Star Wars livery. Um, and also we do have a metal stand, a Gemini Jets metal stand, which I do need for all of my models because none of them have any stand except for one. Um, and uh, so yes, yeah, so um, these are all the models that we will be, that we have actually unboxed today. Um, so let me just put them like that. Um, so, um, I'm excited for every, uh, um, all of the models that are, um, in front of you right here. Um, I had actually original plans to buy other models, so like, uh, Air India, Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines, um, and, um, a lot more Asian models, actually, because I don't have any, or a few. Um, but they, they didn't have it, they didn't have any in stock, or any Air France as well, but they didn't have any in stock, um, at the... Uh, at Aviation Retail Direct, the the big shop in um in Hillingdon, um so I still got a Asian model which is really good. Um, they didn't have any in the um regular livery because I would have probably gone for the um regular livery, but I'm still happy with the uh, Star Wars livery. The Air Canada, I just wanted a long haul aircraft of a country that I didn't have or that none of the aircraft that I had were operating to. Um, and so Air Canada was a good choice. They had it and everything, and I I, I generally uh, uh, like the um, the Air Canada livery. Um, and then I wanted to stick into the um, short haul. Like I, I wanted to get a short haul aircraft, um, and I I knew I wanted a Norwegian because I never had a Norwegian uh, model ever. I've never had one, and um, 
Uh, I never got a 737 MAX 8 either, and then I saw it, and I was just like, Norwegian 737 uh, MAX 8, perfect, so let's go for it. Um, and so yeah, so this is how I decided to get all of these models. So without further ado, we are going to um, take them out of the boxes, and then we'll take a closer look at them. So starting off with the Norwegian, so taking it out of the box, and out of the plastic tray thingy. Taking the plastic off as well. And now taking the model out and it looks absolutely amazing. So here is a close up, can't really see it, the light isn't that good. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful model. Um, the, the, the 737 is gen generally a, a good looking aircraft with the... the, the the winglets especially, um, and yeah, and I'm I'm just glad to have this model. First seven three seven Max eight ever, first Norwegian aircraft ever. I think it's amazing. Moving on to the next one, let me just put this away. There you go. Moving on to the next one, we're gonna go for the Air Canada triple seven dash three hundred EL. Um, oh, I, I, I knew that, but it comes with the stand, I forgot about that. Um, so yeah, so, and I believe the ANA has its own stand as well, which is like a plastic stand. But, um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there is a hole for the, uh, Gemini Jets metal stand. Um, which I, I'll probably use the metal stand more often than the plastic stand, because, obviously, that's more sturdy, that's a bit more fragile, uh, and it's just not good quality so taking the tray off and the uh, plastic sheet off and then taking the model out and this model is absolutely amazing so it's a bit sticky i don't know why but it sticks and look at that and one thing i actually realized with this model is that they actually put like a some sort of ruby or like thingy for the beacon lights so there's it's not just like a red dot it's like an actual shining object that they put and they also put it at, at the, on the bottom of the aircraft I don't know if you can see it on the air canada logo right here at the, at the back um and i just think it adds so much to the uh, realism of the aircraft um, so yeah, so obviously very happy to have this model, um, obviously always good to have a 777, I love the 777 aircraft, um, Air Canada as well, a uh, pretty big, um, airline in the aviation industry in general, um, so yeah, so very glad I got this model, so I'm putting it off to the side right here, um, then obviously yeah, the metal tray, don't need to unbox that, because it's just a, 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 not metal tray, metal stand, so it's just a stand, so it doesn't need to, un any unboxing. And then, last but not least, the ANA 787-9 in the R2-D2 Star Wars livery. And so, so as I said, this one also comes with a stand, plastic as well, but it can, like, it is compatible with the Gemini Jets metal stand, which I will probably use over the... Um, plastic stand so taking the um plastic box off obviously the um uh there is plastic sheet but it was stuck to the um to the box and taking the model out and this model is absolutely amazing the amount of detail on it is just so incredible and same with the air canada same with the air canada which is why i think it's also aviation 400 there's some sort of, of ruby or red object shining object for the beacon lights and um i just think that it adds to the realism so much and it's just incredible um so yeah so first ever ana aircraft in my um in my collection ever um i did want to get a regular livery because obviously this livery first of all doesn't operate that much to the to, to europe um and um last week um it, it had a flight every single day maybe even two flights a day and the uh, the only flight that it had in europe was to frankfurt all of the other ones were like to los angeles denver or or san fran or whatever 
so yeah so this aircraft is pretty rare in europe um but i i just love it and everything um um and, and so yeah so uh, this is just amazing uh, i'm so happy with all the models i got and um and yeah and we're now going to go into a, a deeper um review of each aircraft so i'll see you guys in a second and so starting off the more detailed uh, review of each aircraft so starting off with the norwegian 737 max 8 so right here at the front you've got the classic like um a quarter of the aircraft that is red um then you've got the, a blue stripe and i believe this is to represent the um norwegian flag but uh, i'm not sure then right here you have got the uh, norwegian.com titles you got the L1 door, L2 door here. Then you've got the um, classic um, engine of the 737 Max, which is inspired by the same engine of the um, 787 with those um, spiky things that are actually supposed to reduce the sound and fuel efficiency, uh, actually um, um, increase the fuel efficiency of the aircraft. And then here we've got the classic um, 737 Max aircraft um winglets um which kind of look like um those um um those split scimitars there we go but they're like the bottom one is a bit thicker um and um the angle is a bit steeper um uh, actually less steeper um and yeah and uh then right here we have got um don't know what that is it's either the wi-fi dome or um something else i can't remember what it is then we've got um, a bunch of antennas, again the Norwegian.com uh, titles here, and the registration right here, which is Lima November Bravo Kilo Alpha. Uh, and then a uh, Norwegian has a um, good specification with most of their aircraft. They will put uh, someone important um, that influenced um, influence how we live uh, in in our world. Um, and so this aircraft is in the Oscar Wilde livery. So the person represented at the back is Oscar Wilde. Um, I know they have a, they had at least a Freddie Mercury one on their 787, which I really wish they still operated because I absolutely love Freddie Mercury. Um, I know they've got another one with um, Mary Curry, I think, um, and just like a, a bunch of people that were important in the. Um, um in in the past decade um century sorry um and yeah and so that's it for the uh norwegian um and uh, we are now going to take a closer look at the air canada so starting off with the air canada i mean continuing with the air canada we're going to start with uh, the front part of the air canada so right here we have got the cockpit windows with the classic um like bandit uh black around the cockpit windows um um most uh, not most airlines but like some airlines and some aircraft actually um some aircraft manufacturers sorry actually do this sometimes to reduce the um reflection inside the cockpits because obviously if you, if the sun is coming that way and it's hitting the white part here it can reflect inside the cockpit and ac actually um um make like not make them blind but like blind them basically a bit um, and so this is why some airlines and some aircraft manufacturers, for example, on the um, uh, Airbus A320 and A320neo and A321neo, uh, they give the option of um, putting this black bandit mask around the cockpit windows. Um, so, yeah, so moving on right here, we have got the um, Star Alliance logo because um, um, Air Canada is part of Star Alliance. Um, then we have got, oh no, or is it Sky Team? I think it's Star Alliance. I don't know if it's Star Alliance or Sky Team. I'm sorry. I'm not really good with the alliances. Then right here we've got the Air Canada um, uh, logo. And then we've got the Air Canada titles. We've got the L1, L2 and L3 door here. Um, and then this is what I meant with the ruby. It's like, you can see that it's not just printed on here. It's like a 3D. Or like, hold on, let me try and zoom in. There you go. So you can see that it's like a, a, a ruby of some sort, an object of some sort. And it just makes it look, it, it makes it a lot more realistic, basically. Um. So, yeah, then we've got a, a bunch of detailing. Then uh, moving towards the middle of the aircraft, we've got the um, exit door right here with the, the emergency exit door with um, 
uh, the emergency patterns or whatever, like where you're supposed to walk on the um, on the wing. Then we've got the classic triple uh, seven engines, which are just amazing. Then we've got the Wi-Fi dome, I presume. Got a bunch of antennas. Um, then moving uh, to the back of the aircraft, we've got the registration right here with the um, um, Canadian flag. And the registration is a Charlie Foxtrot India uh, Victor Whiskey. And then we've got the um, type uh, type of aircraft written right here, which is the Boeing 777-300 uh, ER. And then we've got the um, classic um, red Air Canada logo with the um, black background. And then we have um, a, quite a fair bit of detailing around the APU exhaust. Um, and yeah, and overall this aircraft is absolutely amazing. I think it's one of my favourites um, in my collection now, in my entire collection. Uh, I just absolutely love uh, the Air Canada livery. And uh, on the 777 it just looks so good. Um, and yeah, and we are now going to move on to the uh, final aircraft for this airport for this unboxing, sorry, which is the uh, ANA. And so, taking a look at the first half of the aircraft, so right here we've got the cockpit windows, then we got um, a paint job that is um, that represents R two D two, which is a, a classic um, um, mech droid, whatever in uh, Star Wars. I don't know what type of droid it is, um, but yeah, um, so we've got, yeah, so just a bunch of detailing and printing that looks like R2-D2, then we've got the L1 door, L2 door, further back the L3 door, and then finally the L4 door, then again, we got that ruby thingy to represent the beacon light, which just adds a lot of detail, and which is also why I think it's Aviation 400, it's not written on the box, who are the, the, the manufacturer, but I presume that it is Aviation 400. Um, then taking a look at the middle of the aircraft. Um, we've got um, here um, a dot which represents the um, Japanese flag. Because obviously ANA is part of Japan. Is a Japan Airlines. Um, a Japan Airline. Sorry. Which is not the same as Japan Airlines. Which is an actual airline. Anyway. Here we have the registration. Which is, which is Juliet Alpha uh, 873 Alpha, uh, then we got a bunch of detailing up here, then we got the big Star Wars titles right here, just in case you didn't figure it out, there was already Star Wars, and then we got the um, uh, ANA um, titles here, which with their slogan, which is Inspiration of Japan, then we got the um, what type of aircraft it is, which is the Dreamliner, again the registration, the Japanese flag, and then the classic ANA um, branding with the um, dark blue in the background. Um, and yeah, and uh, overall, um, this aircraft is absolutely amazing. I'm really glad I got it. I still think I would have preferred the um, the regular livery because I think it just it's just more realistic. Um, but I, I wanted that they had no um, airlines from uh, Japan or like any like uh, eastern asian airlines the only one they had was the ANA and they only had it in that livery or well, i think they had a japan airlines 777 but in the one world livery and since i already had a um 777 i didn't want to get another one and especially in a special livery or like in a anyway i just decided to go for this one because i just i, I i'm i'm a pretty big fan of star wars uh and i i like ANA and i like the the 777 uh, the 787 sorry um and uh and yeah and so with that said um i want to thank you for watching this video uh the very first video of the new year 2023 um yeah so happy new year to everyone um um i wish you all the best um in your year um and everything um and yeah and so um i really hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye